hello guys hello guys how you all doing are you all doing well and i'm okay it's been over 24 hours or 30 hours since he posted a video so yeah i just decided that you know remember i always tell you that you need to you know bring those questions in the comment section so that when i make videos i know what exactly that i should be addressing so if you have any concept that you'd like me to address or to 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 explain then you're more than welcome just to throw it in the comment section so today there was a, a comment that that i received which is a question eh? where the person asked me that when i'm drawing trend lines remember a candlestick can be in any form it can be like this or it can look like this or it can look like this or whichever pattern you can think of or shape so that guy's question was uh, because of you know the different shapes uh, or forms that you can have as your like your try your, your your candlesticks can have now when i'm drawing my trend line where do i connect you know so let's say we are going up and then we form a candlestick that looks like this one this one here right so that guy's question would be when i'm drawing my trend line are we only focusing on the body or we are involving the tails as well or the wigs some they call them the wigs right? meaning if i'm drawing my trend line am i putting it like this or we ignore the noise that was formed by the wig and only cover you know take into consideration the body right? so that's the question that i received and i'm going to try and answer that in this video yeah so now my advice to you would be when you're drawing your trend line or your zone be it uh, support or resistance right you must involve everything because everything that you have on your chart is part of 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 the price action so you cannot just ignore this like it doesn't exist you can't treat this like it's not there because remember the price was doing something here and it even formed this or it was it came there it passed there so that should be part of your 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 your, your price action so when you're drawing let's say when you're drawing your zone and this is the candlestick that you want to use you can't say i'm going to draw my zone like this and just ignore what is happening there my one so because like that because this is part of the price action when i'm drawing my zone it has to cover everything like that and when i'm drawing my turn line also make sure that you don't leave anything outside it's part of the price action it's there for a reason so my turn line should pass there my one because now if you know sometimes you do get if you draw it if you are one of those that put the trend line by the body and ignore the the thing and ignore the tail sometimes it will do this you will have your nice move you put your trend line and then let's say uh, you decide to put your stop loss there and let's say here and then the price has like a long tail and touches that what are you going to say about that are you going to pretend like like this is nothing this is nothing of which this can change the price like it can change what it can change the price action where you can change the market structure but yet when you're drawing your structures you want to ignore it because remember this that tail that we had there it can change the way the 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 the, the, the price action in a sense that if this was our if this is a support or this is the support we had a support there and we come and then we have that long tail you see as much as you can say we did not break the trend line blah 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 but we broke the support meaning we went lower than the support we had a price going going lower than the support so this tail that you are trying to ignore it can cause the structure on the thing on your chart to change it can cause the change in the structure so that's what i'm saying when you're drawing your your support your resistance or your trend line make sure that every piece or bit of price action around that area you take it into consideration you cannot say i'm just gonna focus on the body and ignore the tail because otherwise you're going to get burned so remember when 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 if let's say i'm drawing a, a zone here right the correct way to do it would be to cover it like this yeah? which means 
for as long as the price is still inside here my buy orders or my reasons to look for buying opportunities for instance if i'm looking to buy there based on the analysis at the time so for as long as the price is still inside there it doesn't matter whether the price is here i'm still welcome to to sell if it gives me reasons to sell for as long as it does not break this so i'm still welcome to sell but now for you if you're putting it you know that that group that only covers the board it means the day the price comes here you'll be like the support is broken of which is not true how can you say the price is broken support of which the price is now at the price at the level that has been before because remember before it came to this point so now how come when it comes doesn't even go lower than that lower to that point but you're saying it has broken what the previous area or the previous price section is as is, is done right one so it doesn't make sense that's why you have to make sure that you cover everything because if the price could come here what can stop you to come here before taking off? If if previously it came like this and then it took off, it means when you took off, when you took off here, when you took off there, it did come here at some point. This is the lowest point that it reached. So if it could reach here before, what can stop you to reach the same point again before taking off? It can. Remember, history can reach, repeat itself. So you can't say now because you know. Remember, it has come there when you were saying your zone is there. So now the price is doing the same thing that it did before, but you are saying it has broken the zone, of which it's coming exactly where it came previously. Why one? Therefore, we can conclude by saying when you are drawing your support or resistance zone or your 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 trend line, involve every piece of price action at that level, meaning we are going to involve the tail. This has to be part of your, your zone i will open the chart now and try and show you two different ways in which people can draw trend lines but i will you know the correct way of how we're doing it here maybe that one works for them but if you're trading it like that you'll be trading uh because remember if you put your trend line there it means you'll be searching for buying opportunities now if say the price comes back you'll be looking to buy from there of which some of us are waiting here so if the price comes for us, it means when you are in a deep loss, because it has came, it has it has been on this on this this trend line before. So when when you are cutting candlesticks like that, you could be in trouble. So I will just open the chart now, and then you'll just draw two trend lines, and then yeah, that's it. All right, I can't find the pr proper price action where I could demonstrate this, but yeah, I'll just use this one. Remember, there were those people who just say, when I'm drawing the trend line, I'm just covering the body and then going to the part of the body, and then this is going to be their trend line. But what about this? What about these good people? Because the price has reached here before. So what can stop it from doing the same thing again? So the correct way to draw that would be make sure that you involve the highest point at that area and the highest point here. So your trend line must pass here. This is the right trend line. And you can see when the price came back to it, it tried to, to react to it. It gave us what? A rejection. A bearish rejection. Which is this one in between, right? So meaning if the price at that time you had concluded, because I'm not analyzing. If at that time you had said everything is printing up and you're looking to sell. Then remember that's where after getting the bearish rejection, you go and put sell stop. And hope that the price will carry on the momentum and trigger you and then go like that but if the the next candlesticks they go higher than this uh, rejection candlestick you ignore the candlestick and then pretend like it does not exist why because it didn't give us anything it's just there in, and nothing happened and you can see even in this case we did have a very nice candlestick uh, rejection bar around the trend line but the next candlesticks managed to break the range and then look what happened. Boom, it did like that. And that's why I'm saying when you're trading like that, the day it goes on the other side, it means that the momentum, in most cases, the momentum is very strong and it will carry over like that. The same thing here. If let's say you were trying to buy from this from this support and the, yeah, the, the price came and gave you this around the same support and then you are like, uh, let me try and buy, let me put a buy stop there. That if it goes lower than that, you can see that uh, no, that that uh, that things like it doesn't exist. But that's not the point. But yeah, all that 
I can conclude by saying what? When you're drawing your trend lines, cover these points, guys. Cover these points. And then you'll see, even when you're looking for areas to sell, they'll be they'll be accurate. Yeah? Alright, I'll just end it there, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Shab shab, do not forget to like and subscribe there.